Welcome to CN Movies, the show where we review movies, but from a Christian's perspective, I am the filmmaker. And I am the film watcher. And today we are reviewing Prince Caspian, otherwise known as Chronicles of Narnia 2, otherwise known as the fourth book in the series. It is. Depending on which way you go. You go in the order it's supposed to be read, which is from Magician's Nephew to Final Battle. If you go in the order it's supposed to be read, then Prince Caspian would be next. It's Prince Caspian's the, the fourth book no, in the it series. Would be the second. One through seven. If you go in the order your book that they're series. supposed to be read. Interesting how in your book series. This is the order that. This is. Okay. So it goes. This is chronological yes. order. If you go in the order they're supposed to be read, which is based on. I notice opinion, how interesting how it says opinion. Magician's Nephew, Lion Witch in the Wardrobe, Horse and His Boy, Prince Caspian, Voyage, Silver Chair, Last And the Battle. order that they were written, which is the way you should read them, is the second. Just admit you were wrong and admit that I am right. Admit defeat. I admit that I like them read in the order that they were written. I'm That's done here. Anyways, Prince Caspian. First category is story. The magical world of C.S. Lewis's beloved fantasy comes to life once again in Prince Caspian, the second installment of the Chronicles of Narnia series. And in Disney Blu-ray, Narnia sights and sounds are more stunning than ever. Disney just can't... Well, they just... It's right in the middle of the description of the story. Join Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy, the mighty and majestic Aslan, friendly new Narnian creatures, and Prince Caspian as they lead the Narnians on a remarkable journey to restore peace and glory to their enchanted land. Continuing the adventure of the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe with more magic and a brand new hero, Prince Caspian is a triumph of imagination, courage, love, joy, and humor your whole family will want to watch again and again. It'll take your breath away like never before on Blu-ray High Definition. Link twice they inserted about how awesome their Blu-ray is. They're like, oh yeah, you have it on Blu-ray, so you have the best ever and never could it be better anyways so what do you think of the story i like the story um all of the books to me were really special growing up and i did really like prince caspian and i thought that they did a good job of adapting it to film there's obviously a few things that were different mainly that prince caspian was a lot older but that added the tension between him and peter and it added the romance with susan so mm -hmm. i understand they're just trying to make it more interesting i guess um but like i said they did a great job i really do like this story it's darker than lion witch and wardrobe um aslan's not in it as much mm -hmm. so it's more focused on like i guess it's more like a personal like what could the kids do you know versus just aslan coming in and saving them um I like how you wrote, of course the Narnia books are all very special to me. Like, everyone's supposed to know that. I'm of writing course. my notes. I'm of course. Anyways. I think you said that in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe review, too. Well, You're like, of, of course. course. Of course I've read these books a hundred times. Everyone knows that. It's basic knowledge. Basic knowledge for me. I thought it was interesting to see Narnia over a thousand years later. Because I think it was like 1300 years later. Yeah. Didn't really say on the back of the box. But in the movie, it's like 1300 years later. It was darker and grittier than The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I think what you just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which for me was a positive. The Ice Witch scene with Edmund redeeming himself. That was cool. Because if you remember the line, The Witch of the Wardrobe, Edmund was kind of well, a... Well, he redeemed himself in Lion Witch of the Wardrobe by mm. cutting out her wand. He really but... showed his maturity and growth yes. here. I did like Edmund. And during the Ice Witch scene, where mm -hmm. the Ice Witch is called upon by Prince Caspian, basically. Prince Caspian, want, he wants help, and he doesn't know how the help will come, and it turns out it's the Ice Witch... Then Edmund comes along and basically saves everyone's butt, which was a nice growth, uh, showing growth for Edmund from the line, which in the wardrobe. Uh, the action is awesome, though I'm surprised it's only PG. Well, they never showed blood or anything. It wasn't, it wasn't like it was extremely just, There was violent. a lot of action. There was a lot of action. Yeah. I'm just surprised it was only PG with the amount of action that's going on. I mean, one dude got his head chopped off. It's true. Yeah. But it only showed the but helmet. But there was no blood. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's sad to know that Peter and Susan can never go back to Narnia. Yeah. I yeah. kind of reconciled that when I was 10 years old, but that's okay. Well, it's still sad to know that Peter and Susan can never go back to Narnia. It's true. Especially after Susan gave Prince Caspian a big old smooch on the mouth. You know, she was all like, give me some of that Prince Caspian, some of that Narnian love. And he does. And then she's like, well, never can come back. Sorry about that. Hope that wasn't your first kiss. <laughs> you know. Anyways, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um... 
Uh, the only other thing I had as a negative was I felt like you didn't get into the world. Like, I don't know. I just feel like in Lion, Witch, Wardrobe, you, like, are completely engrossed right away into Narnia. Like, you love it. It's I feel like amazing. the world building in the first one was better, too. But, and I, I don't, like I said, I don't know if that's because this one was had so much of the Telmar in it. Like, I think it was... And partially because Narnians. they already did introduce Narnia to us in the first yeah. film, so they didn't have to go through and show you all this, you know, didn't have to go, like, everything's magical and wonderful. Like, remember, these but it Peter, Susan, and Edmund are already lived there for, like, yeah. 30 years. That's so true. this isn't, none of this place isn't news to them. The only thing that was really news to them was seeing Narnia all that years later and then realizing that their castle they used to live in is now, like, ruins. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing that was really new to them. Everything else, like, this place isn't new to them. They already know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing magical about Narnia to them anymore. They are used to Narnia. They're just, they are just not used to how Narnia is right now. So, I mean, I get why they didn't focus on Narnia being, ah. Yeah. yeah. I was just saying the Telmar, Telmarines or whatever were in it just as much as, mm -hmm. they if not more, time. than the Narnians. And yeah. So it doesn't feel as much like Narnia. Well, the Telmarines had taken over Narnia. Well, yeah, so it was a different Narnia. I get it. Yes. I'm just saying. Yeah, since they had taken over Narnia, those dang humans taken over Narnia. Yeah, that's why That's why they didn't. But anyways, what was your final score? My final score was 12 out of 15. And mine was a 14 out of 15. I'm surprised you gave it a lower score after all. Of course the Narnia books are all very special to you. The books. The next section is characters. Of course, the main character is Prince Caspian. Uh, he of is. Course. Stop. It's called Prince Caspian, so of course the main <laughs> character course. is Prince Caspian. Not really. Really, the main characters. I mean, it does start. The movie does start off with Prince Caspian. However, it's really still about it's Peter still Susan. About Edmund. Peter Susan. Yeah. Anyways, I and put. Lucy. Sorry. I put that. Um, where did I have Caspian? That. Ben Barnes, he did a good job. He's likable. I thought he was like, for his age, I think he should have been more critical of the Narnians. Mm -hmm. That was one thing that like didn't make sense because they made Caspian older, and then yet at the yeah. same time he like completely was like, oh yeah, I'll be the king of these people I've never met before and only thought were fake. I think, but I think the, the yeah, I get what it was a very quick turnaround. But at the same time, I think. He just doesn't like the Telmarines, well, yeah. and they just tried killing him. So he's gonna take the other side, the side that also doesn't like the Telmarines. You know, the side that wants to kill the people and just try to kill him. Yeah, so makes sense. Um, Edmund, I think, is still my favorite in this one. He's just so much. He's more mature than he was in the first movie. He's the funny one. He's the actually smart one. He was much better in this film. Yeah. Yes. Um, Lucy's still. I. She's still one of my she favorite. She was way too. less annoying in this movie as well. Her and Edmund made huge strides in not being the terrible people they were in the first movie. Yeah. Lucy, Lucy was, was not terrible. Lucy was a terrible person that probably would have caused World War Three. She probably caused World War Two. That's probably why World War Two even happens, because of Lucy. But Edmund and Lucy were both greatly improved. And Peter and Susan were not. They no, were Peter and Susan were basically like the same worse. people. No, Susan, as Susan got older, she gets more... She's more self cynical. Well, yeah. She she was like ready to not think about Narnia at the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. She's like, hey, we're here now, which is yeah. fine. That's understandable. Which well, they did on purpose because these people aren't going to come back. Yeah. For, yeah. But then once she's in Narnia, she's like, I don't know. She's just the negative one. I don't she's know. She's just like, I don't get it though. Like, why would you be negative about going to a different country? Maybe because you're just about to become an adult in your own world. Well, so. and she knows she's going to go back. Like, she spent years here. Yeah. And she had to go back to her world and get adjusted. And now she has to come back again. Yeah, she know. did spend quite a long time there. And Peter's the same, but more cocky and immature. He in this is movie. more immature. It's almost like him like him and Edmund. Edmund went up and Peter went down. Because Peter's like, it comes back and it just expects to be the high king. Like, he comes back and every, he expects to give orders and people just to follow them. Because that's what it was when he left. But then that's not how it is. And Prince, everyone's following Prince Caspian. Peter's like, great, like, he's a legend and all, but they're not following him. They're following Prince Caspian. Well, they do, but they do follow Peter. It's really that they're following Prince Caspian later. less no. than Peter. Because remember when they decide to do the attack on the castle, that was Peter's idea. And mm -hmm. he looks at the centaur and he's like, are you with me? And then the centaur yeah. does look at Caspian and look at him like... Yeah, exactly. Prince Caspian didn't go no. If Prince Caspian well, had gone true. no, then he might have been like, I'm with Caspian. I guess. You know, I'm just saying, Prince Caspian's the one that started the whole revolution. Peter just showed up. To, Peter was like support and Prince Caspian was the leader. 
But in all the battle scenes, Peter's the one that's charging oh, first. Oh, Peter, Peter is, that's because he has like 30 years of experience underneath <laughs> his belt. He yeah. just goes in with his blade and just goes slicing away. Like, the action was and, way better in this movie. Well, that's more, I yeah, the like, action. I like how Susan mm-hmm. was in the battle a lot. Yes, cool. well, I read that Susan cool. actually asked to be in the battle oh, really? more. Yes, because she didn't like the fact that she didn't use her bow much in the first movie. And apparently in the actual book, Prince Casting, she doesn't use her bow much as well. So she was like, can I, can I use my bow more? And they, they did, they, they put her in the action more and she was pretty awesome. She was like Hawkeye, but she did miss sometimes. Um, Reed Pacheep, I said is great, but I do like he's him. like Puss in Boots before Puss in Boots. It's almost like, that's why, well, okay, Shrek 2 came out before Prince Caspian, the movie. But at, however, Shrek 2 came out after Prince Caspian, the book. So did they get Puss in Boots from? Prince Caspian, Puss possible. in Boots is actually a very old character, but anyways. Puss in Boots is hilarious, but that's a different movie. Reap Cheap, though, is great. I do he, love Reap Cheap. He, was, he added a new dimension. Reap Cheap's a little mouse, in case you didn't know by now. That's kind of, he's like, a, he's like Puss in Boots. Him and Puss in Boots should have a battle. That'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> that would be a good movie. Um, and I liked all the fighting between Caspian and Peter. I wasn't sure whether to put that in story or characters, but I liked all the fighting. Like, I wish they had more fighting between those two. Because they had pretty good sword battles. I didn't really care about the sword battle between Peter and the Telmarine. I wanted to see more between Peter and Caspian. Because I actually care about those characters. I don't care about the evil but, leader Yeah, of you care Telmarine. about those characters, so you don't want them to hurt each other. Kind of do. Okay. Kind of wish, I kind of wish Caspian would have beat the daylights out of Peter and Peter would have realized he's not who he used to be. That would have been great. But anyways, so what do you give the characters? Uh, 8 out of 10. I give the characters a 10 out of 10. Oh. These, this was better than... Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe. Well, I took away points because... Because it wasn't Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe? Pe- no, because Peter and Susan weren't... Yeah. I like I the know. fact that they were different. I yeah. like. I liked I, it. Because it does show... It wasn't the same characters this last time. These They all had grown yeah. in different ways. Whether it was or gro- not grown. Whether it was... Gr- <laughs> well, no. I mean, Peter yeah. is growing, but he's struggling with other things. He's, he's becoming an adult. Same with Susan. next category is music uh i really i think they did a good job with the music in this one too um it's a little bit darker more serious music but uh, i don't know i guess you can't say there's as many m- memorable moments but i did put i like there was a couple scenes in the battle where the music just fades to silence in both the battles the first mm-hmm. battle and the second battle i remember it more so in line the witch in the wardrobe when it was right before they collided both the sides heart, yeah and it, and it went silent and it yeah. went silent that was well really... they do that again with the yeah the battle of these but once you repeat it, it it's not as epic as the first time. you're right yeah, but so. it was a little different because it was complete silence there was no heartbeat because they did it right as Edmund's flying over the dead mm-hmm. bodies. And so it's completely silenced because they're dead. I mean, they, yeah. there is no heartbeat. Yeah. And then the other time, it fades not quite to silence, but it fades to silence and the arrows are whizzing overhead mm-hmm. to attack the submarines. That's true. So there is this. Yeah. It was a different sound, but yeah, same. Yeah, thing. yeah. So you, they used the same. I thought the music was epic, but there's nothing too memorable. I don't remember any of the music from the movie. And I can't go giving these it's movies... It's the same thing. I can't keep giving these movies... That's fine, but I can't be giving these movies higher scores because when you got movies like Pirates of the Caribbean when there's no songs that are being sung, but yet you still remember the theme song, that's how... That's good music. The music here has nothing too memorable. There's nothing memorable. The theme song. You don't remember Pirates of the Caribbean no, theme song? No, I remember the theme oh. song of Caspian. Well, you can remember it, but I'm saying it's not memorable in general. People okay. aren't going making covers of the Prince of Caspian theme. People are making covers of... Pirates of the Caribbean for a good reason. That's an epic song. So if you want to compare it to other movies, it's not as memorable. It's not okay. as good. It's at, the music is epic. It's just not as good. And so for the my final score, I gave it a seven out of ten. I gave it nine out of ten. Of course you did. Of course you did. All right. The last category is the Christian nutritional value. Peter and the Narnians not trusting or waiting on Aslan. I thought was a a real human emotion. Um, cause Aslan is, is supposedly God or Jesus in the story, in the story, in the movie he is. Um, so when they said that when I forgot who it was Susan or Lucy saying, let's wait on Aslan. And Peter said, they've been waiting on Aslan long enough. You know, um, I thought that was like, that's like real humans right there. That's like, that's a real thing that happens between Christians nowadays and probably back then too. I'm just saying that nowadays it happens. Um, so they think they can do it on their own. And I just, yeah, I thought it showed a real human side. It's not really a positive, like, you shouldn't be like, I'm not going to wait on God. 
But it showed, but then the right after, like because they chose to not wait on Aslan, things didn't go according to plan, yes. Whereas in Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, when they did, and they did things according to his plan, everything went the way it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, they didn't have all the struggles they did in this movie. Um, the Wolf and the Hag tempting Caspian with getting what he wants, but not how he wants it, aka the Ice Witch scene, where she comes back. Because he was asking for help because they couldn't wait on Aslan, remember? And so, like, kind of like when Abraham and Sarah wanted the kid, mm -hmm. God promised the kid, but then they wanted to do it their way. Yep, they're like, they no, we can't wait. wait. Yeah. And so they did it their own way, and it's not how they wanted it. Um, and Peter's pride and expecting to be the king he once was, but no, is no longer. I already mentioned that earlier in characters, but mm -hmm. it shows, you know, and it shows like Peter's, it got in his way multiple times. Like he didn't, he was not this, he was not the high king he used to be, whereas he probably should have been. Um, but anyways. What did you have? That was pretty much what I had. Um, I thought there was a lot of a lot of different things in this one. The, the main thing was, you know, the point of the book is to learn how to wait on God in difficult times and and learn how to wait actively, I guess, because I mean, you can't just sit in the castle and expect Jesus to come. I think mm -hmm. I think that there were things that they should have been doing, but mm. not necessarily going out and attacking yeah. the castle. Anyways, but... Yeah, that was a terrible plan. The castle, castle attack, which we haven't even mentioned before. They attacked the castle, which I thought was the wrong plan. I mean, I get I get, I get, get the idea, but at the same time, they probably should have just done some spy work. You yeah, know? it was just kind of like Peter was like, guts let's, and glory and let's go. Yeah, you know? like, I used to do this all the time. It's cool. Like, yeah. we got this, but he doesn't realize it's not the same Narnia. Yeah. Um, whereas they should have just sent us a few spies and spotted who is in there and what do they have and then and then attack them later if they thought they could take because them. Because we're military strategists, so we know. That's not it. I'm just saying that's that's like basics. Like you should find out what the enemy has for you to go attacking the enemy. You can't shouldn't just go and attack and what if they had machine guns? They could have. And you would have had no idea. And then Arnie's been like, I thought we thought you knew. And he's like, I had no idea. But luckily, no one had a machine gun. So thank, Anyways, thankfully, you know. I liked how it showed that, you know, the Christian walk isn't always the same. You get mm -hmm. saved, and that's one thing. That's big and mm -hmm. exciting. But then you have to actually like, go through life. And Aslan like, does say multiple times, things don't always happen. Things don't happen, happen twice, same twice. Yeah. You know? Same way twice. Yeah. And, and I liked how Aslan didn't even, like, he came in and saved them at the end. But With he the trees. Yeah, yeah. He, like he he just wasn't as present, mm -hmm. and that was really to prepare Peter and Susan for going back into our world, and not having Aslan there physically, not but knowing there, yeah. but knowing they could still rely and depend on God. I mean, like they say that in the book. So it's just it's cool for for us to see it as Christians to know, even though our world isn't Narnia, obviously, mm -hmm. we still go through things that are are trying and they're dark and they're hard. Mm -hmm. And while we may want to just rush off and do the first thing, sometimes you have to wait on God. And I liked I liked the theme of that. There's lots of other things. I mean, Lucy's faith in Aslan. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she's pretty much unwavering. Yeah. Yeah. Even well, it, this was the first time that Lucy didn't follow Aslan. Like she was swayed by Peter and Susan when yeah. she could have. She knew Aslan wanted her to come down the gorge. Well, and she fall. doesn't. She's losing her childlike faith. Yeah. She's getting older. She's getting older. Technically, she's only a year older, but reality is she was definitely a couple years older. Yeah. <laughs> the actor, yeah. Yeah, the actress, yeah. And even even Trumpkin, uh, like, they showed just different levels of faith, I think. Because, like, mm -hmm. Trumpkin knew there was an Aslan, and he knew. Yeah. But he didn't really believe. So, Peter Dinklage? Yeah. He yeah, didn't Peter really... Dinklage is in this movie, by the way, for you Game of Thrones fans. He didn't. And he was a dwarf. Obviously. Anyways. Oh, well, I'm sorry. They could have given him stilts. Trumpkin <laughs> knew there was Aslan. He knew he existed. But same, he wasn't expecting Aslan to come save them. He wasn't even, like, thinking about Aslan. And I think that can happen where we, yeah. we know God's there, but we don't even, like, consider asking mm -hmm. him for help or whatever. So, but well, by the end of never, it. Unlike that, unlike Peter, Susan Edmund, he's he never, never actually met yeah. Aslan. So, it, I don't know. Like, it doesn't seem like people really pray. They kind of hope Aslan just shows up. Probably like back when Jesus was around, you know. Yeah. They were just hoping to see Jesus. Um, you know, faith, well, they're doing faith by sight. But anyways, so the only knock I gave Christian nutritional value was there's a lot of action for only PG, which is fine for adults. But, you know, if you got like younger kids, there is a lot of action. It's nothing bad. Okay. There's just a lot of I don't it. think you can count that as Christian nutritional value. Yes, because... What do you mean? There's a lot more action. There's, a there's lot even of a dude's head that gets Bible. cut off. Several people get their heads cut yeah, off. Yeah, I know it's how we skipped over that, by the way, when we were in Sunday school. Kind of skipped over all that action. I'd have been more intrigued if we had, you know, talked about the action. You should have come to my church. Mm, 
we'll go back in time and fix that. But you know, like it's it's kind of reminiscent of <laughs> it's kind of reminiscent of Power Rangers with there was a lot of action. It wasn't bad. The action in Power Rangers isn't bad. There's just a lot more of it. So you know, if you I'm just saying, like unlike Lion Witch and Wardrobe, where it was like one battle, there was a lot more action in Prince Caspian. So, so if you, you have a younger think, kid okay. who who might want to go around punching things, you know, this is probably not the movie to show him. That's okay. all I'm saying. Anyways, my final score is 14 out of 15. Mine was 15 out of 15. Makes sense. Our final score for Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, is an 89 out of 50. I mean, sorry, <laughs> this is 89 out of 100. Man, we can't get our scores right. Um, 89 out of 100, which is lower than our uh, original Lord, uh, Lion, Witch, in the Wardrobe score, which was a 93, I believe, out of 100. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it's 93. However, I like this movie more than Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe. I think Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe, I don't know. I think maybe I gave it this movie a higher score and you gave this movie a lower score. I don't know what happened. I'd have to go back and check, but... This movie, I liked it more than, than, than Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I thought that, I don't know, personal, just personal opinion. No real reason, just liked it more. I thought, that I liked all the real human, I liked the, I liked the characters more in this movie than I did in Lion, the Witch, and Wardrobe. It's probably what it is. I like the world in Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yes, I agree. The world in, in the original was much better, but the characters in this movie I thought were better. And that's what won me over. So do you have, a, you have anything else you think about the movie? No, it's good. I like it. Yeah? Just not as much as... The first one. Personal opinion. Wow. So the next movie we're doing is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Uh, it's the second movie in the series, so stay tuned for that. It'll be. What if it was the third movie and we just skipped the second movie? We didn't skip. The second I know, movie. but what if we just skipped it? Then I'm sure someone would point that out. That's not very nice, you guys. You guys, I know, I know. All right, I'm aware. But anyways, stay tuned and subscribe and. See you next time. Bye.